So I'm just going to start with like a, a brief introdu introduction about myself. Um, um, I'm, first of all, I'm very excited um, to be here today with all of you for this first decoupage class. Um, my name is Benedetta. Um, I'm 43 and I'm from um, Tuscany, uh, Italy. Um, I'm sure you recognize my accent by now. My accent is still really strong. Um, I moved in New Jersey about 13 years ago now. Uh, and my background is um, in art history and conservation. Um, I got my degree from um, the University of Siena. Um, and when I moved in this country, I worked for a couple of years in a fine art conservation studio um, in Chelsea, New York. Uh, we were working mostly with the main galleries in Chelsea, and I specialized a little bit in uh, uh, painting conservation. But then I had my first son and I needed to be closer you know, to home. And I applied for a job at the Montclair Art Museum. And I worked there for over 10 years. Uh, one of my daughters and Linda is taking this class. And I'm really glad to see you, Linda. <laughs> so at the Montclair Art Museum, I was um, uh, working in the education department as manager of education programs. And I was in charge of tours of school groups and adult groups at the museum, as well as outreach programs uh, and the museum art truck. And then unfortunately, because of all these, you know, crisis, economic crisis going on, I lost my job recently. Um, so I'm really grateful that uh, Michelle and Katie gave me this opportunity uh, to teach for the meal. Um, I consider myself a very creative person, so I always need um, a creative outlet. Um, so I, I've been doing decoupage since I was probably in college, uh, and I'm also um, doing watercolor. I'm a student of Sharon Pitts, who I'm sure some of you know, and I've been with Sharon for over um, eight years now. Um, so this is a little bit about, um, about myself. I, I, I live in Montclair and I have two uh, boys, nine and 12 year old, uh, who at the moment are downstairs. <laughs> I ask them not to come up and like ruin my class. So I really hope that they'll behave. Um, okay, so um, uh, let's talk a little bit about decoupage. So uh, decoupage is the art of decorating an object uh, by gluing color paper cutouts. Uh, the word decoupage uh, is a 20th century word from the French word decouper, um, which means cut out. So if you consider decoupage as the art of cutting out to decorate, uh, it really has a long and fascinating um, history, actually. Um, in the 12th century, uh, we know that in China, they were using uh, decoupage for, um, like for, to decorate boxes and other kind of objects. But decoupage became more popular in the 17th and 18th century in Europe. And it was considered an activity for, you know, very like creative artistic women. Um, among these women, there was uh, Mary uh, Delaney from, from England, who used to do a uh, beautiful um, collage uh, with tissue paper, where she was basically uh, recreating uh, flowers and plants. Um, so I'm going to show you um, a couple of photos that I found um, of her work and other decoupage work. Can you all see it? Okay, so this is Mary Delaney. So she was cutting tissue paper to do these beautiful um, compositions. And these are other um, examples or on how you can use decoupage on like these. I, I, I can't I can't see it. Neither can I. Oh okay. Let me try again. You're on your screen? Maybe you have to, let me try again. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. 
So this is one of Mary Delaney, a uh, beautiful composition with tissue paper. It's, I mean, it's an extent of the term um, decoupage. If you think about decoupage like cutouts, you can also think about uh, Matisse, right? Who did also a lot of um, work with paper. But I mean, this is an extension of the term decoupage. Okay, so I think this was my introduction. So Michelle, I think we can switch the spotlight on uh, what I'm doing right now and we can start. Okay, great. So um, I have a fine sandpaper. Um, I'm just gonna use it to make sure uh, that the object, this is a tray actually, is um, a wooden tray. Uh, that it's all smooth and it doesn't have any like splinter or things that are going to um, interfere with the process actually. So do you all have some sandpaper? If you don't, don't worry. I mean, um, you can skip this step or you can just use a cloth to dust the object. So I'm just gonna do it very quickly. Especially here, I see stuff that I don't want to see in this corner. Okay. And then I'm going to use my clothes um, to clean the object. Okay. So, do you all have acrylic paint? Yes. Okay. So, oh yeah, there was a question about the sandpaper. This is 220, but you can use anything you have in the house. Just don't use the thicker one. Just uh, the fine one is always good. Um, so, in terms of acrylic, I use this brand, but that's, you, you don't have to use this brand. This is a Falk R. Um, I really like to use light colors. So I got a few colors that you can mix with the uh, white actually, uh, or like pastels. But I mean, again, you can really use the color um, that you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's put our acrylic paint in a small container. I don't usually mix um, water with the acrylic just because I want the paint to cover the surface as much as possible, okay? Are you all there? Do you have any questions so far? I'm good. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start. Benedetta? Yes. This is Emmy. Um, yes. I wonder, is it all right to use white or not? I mean, yes. by itself. Absolutely, any color you want, yes. Okay, thank this you. Is, this is, the one that I'm using um, is, is a, uh, like a cream color. Um, so it's sort of fine, anything. You know, I usually use uh, colors just because then you have, especially if you use a napkin to do the decoupage, the nap napkins are usually, uh, they have usually like a white or like light background. That's the, that's the okay. So I'm going to start doing my object. Um, it may require. Um, I'm pretty sure you you will need to use to do a couple of layers actually. Make sure you cover all your surface. So are we all at this point? Are you all starting to paint? Yes. Okay. Did you mix the uh, white with a color or just straight white are you using? This is pure uh, white. I'm just using like water, but just to um, 
just to wet my uh, brush. I'm not gonna mix water with the, with the paint because I want the paint to be more uh, you know, solid color actually. So if you use water, uh, then you have to do more layers. This is pretty much the color of my wood. I can barely see the difference, but the paint is there. I consider this technique very relaxing as well. Because I mean, you like, you can focus on what you do and just be present in the moment, you know, a kind of meditation, really. I didn't put any music on. Do you think you will like some music? Maybe next time I can figure it out. Or do you prefer not to? I think it depends. In exercise class, the teacher uses music, but sometimes it just bounces and makes it hard to hear her. I see, okay. So it depends. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Okay, th this step is gonna take some time, of course, especially if you have like a big object. But we'll get there. Bernadetta, if yes. I'm, I have that block of wood, can I just paint the front of it? So, or do I have to paint the side? It's, it, so it's up to you. What do you think the use of that object is going to be, right? Is it just for like, to like get yourself, I mean, comfortable doing decoupage? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I to the front. Just uh, do you, yes, if you have another object, I would like you to start to paint the second object while we're waiting for the first one to dry. Okay, I, I saw that you have two, right? Yes, I have two, yes. Okay, yeah. You can use the same color or another color.
so there was a question about the paper that we can use. Um, I usually use either decoupage paper, but I was telling Michelle that it's not really easy to find like decoupage paper for some reason. Um, so I recently started to use napkins and I have to say that they work really, really well, but you can really do decoupage with any kind of paper. And Joya just told me that she's using uh, uh, fabric, which I never, I never tried, but I'm sure, I mean, the result is gonna be beautiful as well. Um, now, the thicker the paper is, the more layers of Mod Podge you will have to apply. But that's pretty much it. So we'll try, uh, during the class, we'll try different papers and see the result. How are you all doing? It's all good? Okay. Benedetta. Yes. For the first layer, should we be going pretty thin, light on the paint? Not really, actually. Um, oh. Yeah, I think if you do that, then you may need to apply three layers. So just okay. use the color as, as thick as possible. And it's okay. going to take longer, but then. Um, you can skip like the third layer problem if you do that. Now you want us to sand and move on to a second piece? Yes, please. If you're if you're done with the first one, please do the same with the sanding and cleaning of the object and then start to paint the second object you have. And hopefully the first one is gonna dry in the meanwhile. Yeah, unfortunately the first couple of steps are not like very exciting, but then when you apply the paper, I, I really love it to see, you know, you're, you're gonna work on your composition and uh, the result is gonna be really beautiful. I'm not going to paint the bottom of my tray. I just don't need to do that.
Okay, I'm almost done with my first layer. Good. Yeah. Benedetta, yes. Did you say to do a second layer on object one? Yes. Okay. It should be dry by now, Linda. Check. If not, just wait a couple of minutes. Okay. Is there other paint that we can use other than acrylic that would work as also? Um you could well you could try with like a tempera. Mm -hmm. Um like a water-based tempera, but it, would, it wouldn't cover your surface as well as the acrylic. So maybe, maybe you can do several layers. Definitely not like an oil-based um, oh. color. So always like a water-based. I think acrylic is really like perfect for this kind of technique. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm going to get uh, my second object. Um, and I have this um, cute frame. It's a wooden frame. I remove everything so I don't have to worry about the glass inside. And I'll do the same. Another thing that I like about the equipage is that supplies are non-toxic because unless you use at the very end, they, like a varnish or a, la a lacquer can, that can be toxic, it's all water-based. So you don't need to wear a mask or you don't have to be concerned about anything. And I, I love it.
I promise you that at the end of the class, you will all have at least two to three, even four um, finished objects. And they're really like nice gifts to do. For a long time when I was in college, there was my Christmas gift for everybody. It was a decoupage from me. Okay, I think I'm good. I'm do the inside on my frame a little bit here. You can find some of these nice um, wooden object and Michaels. They have they have a nice collection there actually. Okay, so do you all have about like two objects now with the first layer pretty much done? Yes. Okay. So I'm going back to my tree, which in the meanwhile is pretty much completely dry. And I'm going to do the second layer. Are you all doing good? Do you have any question for me in the meanwhile? I'm very relaxed. Okay, good. Good, I'm glad to hear that. I have a question. Can you hear me, Bernadetta? Yeah. Yes. Um, what would happen if you didn't use the acrylic and decoupage straight onto the natural wood? Well, you, you can do it, uh, but then, especially if you use 
like a napkin, you'll be able to see, you know how the napkin has, um, I'll show you, the, like, the, ba the background is white, right? So you will see the white of the napkin on top of, of the wood, which I mean, could be fine. Or if you, if you do that, I would recommend like cutting the shape in the best, way ever and then to just apply you know a single strawberry in the in the wood and you'll decide the composition but yeah definitely you can do it thank you yeah Yeah, I think for me, two layers uh, should be fine. I can already tell that is the color that I, I want it to be. Do you see how the second layer is covering pretty much everything underneath? So that is good. Benedetta, did you see the question, does the Mod Podge then become an adhesive for the wood? No, I didn't see that question. Thank you, Michelle. So yes, the Mod Podge, who is, it's basically like a water-based glue, um, is going to be um, the glue for the paper and it is gonna really like glue the, the paper to the wood. And then on top of the paper, we're going to apply um, at least a couple of layers uh, of Mod Podge so basically your final layer is gonna be as smooth as possible. I, I read the recipe to do your own match patch, but I'm not sure that it works. Uh, and it was, it was only school glue and water, which surprised me a little bit because as you know, match patch can be a little bit expensive. So. I'm not sure if it works, but maybe maybe we can try together.
Okay, so the goal for this first lesson is going to be to have at least two objects ready. I'm not sure if we'll be able to apply any paper today because it has to be completely dry. So maybe it's better if we wait until um, the next lesson. Are you all working in the sec in the first object with the second layer now? Yes. Okay. I did both. Um, one of them okay. I just decided to stain instead of paint it. Okay, sure. And you know what helps between the layers? Hair drying. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> it does. It really does. So if you, if you want to do that, yes, please feel free to use the hair dryer. Um, it really works well. You can dry your object in like really like 30 seconds, I think, right? If you have a third object, you can start with the third as well. I mean, do as many as you want. There's a question in chat. Um, yeah. Her microphone isn't working. Um, I think this was the one about the Mod Podge. Is that also used as a sealer? Yes. Okay, she so, lost the connection. So she missed what you were talking about that. Okay, so um, at the end when, so we're gonna use the Mod Podge as glue and as sealer. Then, if you really want to use this object in the kitchen, um, like for instance, I'm planning to use this tray, right? Uh, you can put like coffee or tea on it. Um, if you want to do that, I will recommend at the very end to um, get another um, sealer, like a lacquer, um, which is like a varnish. But uh, I'm not gonna do it because they're very toxic usually. So this is really up to you. But the match Podge is gonna be like a water-based sealer. So that's all you need. Of course, you, you will have to be careful when you clean um, like this spray, for instance. Um, I won't be able to use like this dishwasher or like very hot water. So I will have to uh, be very careful, but that's, that's also, so the match Podge is glue and sealer at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So since we don't have much left, right? I um, I want to see what kind of paper you all you all have for next time. If you can just hold the paper that you have, okay. I see Beth, beautiful. That's beautiful. That's a napkin, right? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, Linda, I love your flowers. It's a napkin too. 
Yes. Okay. Great. I love it. And then let's see who else. I see Amy. Oh, so Amy, you you send me the email about the cards, right? So that's what you're gonna use, and that's perfectly fine. That's beautiful. Okay, I love it. And then you have also a napkin. Okay, so it looks like a lot of people have napkins. Okay, I love that uh, leaf there. Oh uh, yeah, I think we're really. So Joy, I do. You're gonna use fabric. Let me see how thick is this fabric that you have. Can you can you unmute yourself, uh, Joya? <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's see. So I have different. Uh, I tried to pull out the thinnest swatches I had. Yes. But they're 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 very light, very thin. Okay. Uh yeah, and then I also have uh I have a ton of these different swatches. I haven't decided what to do yet. But I, yeah. I also yeah. have uh different uh tote bags, I yeah. have wrapping paper. Okay, okay. And I also have uh tissue. Tissue paper. Tissue paper. Okay. I wasn't yeah. sure if tissue paper would work because I thought you it know, might be too thin. It is, it is thin. It is very thin. But what we're going to do with napkin, you know how napkins are made by different layers? I'm going to ask you to remove uh, the layer and keep the layer on top, which is probably the same as okay. tissue paper. We just have to be more careful when we apply with the match budge. That's it. Yeah, but I think oh, it will great. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Someone else wants to show me what they're working. Okay, Robin. Oh, I see napkins. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. And then Ellen. Okay, let's see Ellen. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. I love that. Okay. Wow, I'm excited to see the final results. Oh, that's a beautiful paper, too. Very nice. So I'll show you what I have here. Um, okay, this is a napkin that I found just yesterday at the store. Can you all see it? It's just like uh, polka dots. I have, a, I have a thing for polka dots and this is like gold, which is also one of my favorite colors. <laughs> so that's the perfect combination. And then I have, did you all saw these already? This is a beautiful, napkin with strawberries and then i have let's see this is very nice to to do something in the kitchen and this is my favorite thing ever which is sunflowers i also have decoupage paper that i got in italy when i was there last summer um and again it's uh, this beautiful um, sunflowers. Now, when I use this paper, I usually cut, cut out the paper. When I use the napkin, I can use the whole napkin. So this would be, I'm gonna find a kind of like beautiful composition that I want, but this is gonna take more time for me because I have to cut out every single pedal and try to be you know wow precise yeah mm -hmm. really cool yeah um so i did yeah well so with some flowers i did so this is a, a nice box it was the color of the tree see inside and then i cut out every single um sunflower and I think the result is really cute, right? Beautiful. Look how beautiful is that. And then, can you all see these like crackles on top? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we'll do this process as well. Now, to do this process, I'll explain you next time. You'll need 
special supplies, which, which is a lacquer. Um, and I'll show you, and it comes in two different steps. But we'll, we'll, we, have, we, we can do this only at the very end. So, and only if you want. Um, it's gonna be beautiful um, even without this, this kind of uh, technique. And this is the last piece that I work on. Look how beautiful it came. Wow. Isn't that great? Where did you get the wood? Um, uh, Michael's. They do okay. have bigger and smaller. I'll show you. The smaller ones are super cute to make um, coasters. See? Oh, those are, nice. yeah, the smaller version. And this again, it's like, a, it's a big tray, but I love how the like crackling came out, right? Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, thank you. What, do you suggest we do something for next week? Um, so if you have another object, maybe you can go ahead and paint in the meanwhile and have everything ready because next week we're going to do the gluing of the paper and we're going to use much touch on top so um maybe yes i mean if you have time and and you want to i would definitely prepare the same way that we did today a third and fourth object um, and then um, we'll do the exciting part next week, um, which is, you know, to find a composition and then to put everything down. Um, if you want to use the cutout method, I would also suggest maybe uh, to go ahead and cut some of the paper. Um, or you can do it during class. It's really up to you. If we want to glue on or mod podge on, like, strips of a napkin on the side. Yes. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. Yeah. On the side, there are, on my napkins, they have the sides. Yes. Can we do that during the week with Mod Podge on the side? Sure. If you want to try, yes. You just do one layer of Mod Podge, okay? Then you apply the napkin there. And then when it's dry, you go again with another couple of layers of much budge. Okay. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay, because I think on the sides of my piece here, that might be a good idea. Yes, I love the idea, yeah. You know, you can do a tray with those pieces, right? I think they, they would make very it's very heavy. It, it's, it's, very from heavy. A it's from a construction site. So. I see. It. I see. It. <laughs> That's fine, you know, <laughs> like a cheese tray or something like that. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> you'll need a forklift to pick it up. Okay. <laughs> okay so. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any other question? I'm going to keep working on my second uh, piece. Benedetta? Yes. You just clean up the acrylics with water, right? Yes, absolutely. Just water. If you want to be more like, you know, precise, you can use also some soap on the brush just to make sure that it's all gone. Yeah. So just soap and hot water. Yep. And you'll be ready for next week. Uh, you know, she's asking, um, thing, and she's asking, you know, Oh, yeah. She's like you know. Yeah, she's cute. Uh, so, Bernadetta, um, yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, even after the second coat, if I see that they're part of the wood is showing, uh, you know, kind of streaks of wood. Should yes. I go for the third layer? I would um, do it. I would do yeah. it. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the result is going to be uh, better if you do it. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank okay. you. Yeah. I actually have another question. If mm -hmm. 
it's just stained, which is what I did on one of them. I didn't paint it. If you use the crackling, it, mm. the crackling thing, will it not crackle because um, it's not painted? So the crackle, it's basically, as I show you, in two steps, right? So if you use the step one, that's the one who's gonna give you the crackling effect. So it will show. Now, what kind of stain did you use? Did you use like a, a light or like a dark? Okay, so maybe we'll be able to see some. Um, it depends from, so at the end of the crackling technique, uh, you use um, either a powder, um, color like a powder paint, uh, pigment, or what I use here it's eyeshadow. Um, so if you have, you know, you you can use really anything you have in the house. So if you use a dark like a dark brown um, eyeshadow, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see some. But of course, if you have a light background, you it will show a little bit better. But we'll we'll try, uh, Robin, and we'll see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. It's already time to go. <laughs> oh my God. I have to go. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. Thank you. See you next week. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so Benedetta. much. Thank you. Bye. Thank Alla you. prossima. Alla prossima. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You. See you guys soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.